Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So today we're gonna be once again talking about Dustborn, which I know a lot of you guys enjoy because watching this hilarious downfall of this game is something very satisfying to see. But today we're gonna be going over some new developments regarding the actual team behind Dustborn, who has come out to condemn the tidal wave of abuse and hate they have been facing since the launch of this game. Of course, they are trying to change what is actually happening here, and that is a wave of fair criticism, and they are now trying to liken it to a tidal wave of hate and abuse in an attempt to downplay their own responsibility in the failure of this game. Now, before we look at the statement from the developers, as always, it is the end of the month, so my code at Advanced GG is now boosted to 20% through today and tomorrow night. Use code REV to save 20% off your total Advanced GG order. You can use that on many different lines of my collection over Advanced GG, including the new uh, plastic shaker I got there. Also, my new flavor jar right there. As you can see, green tea, green tea lemonade. I know a lot of you guys enjoy that. So those are there. You can also check out everything else on the website and on my page with the link in the description and the pinned comment. And make sure to use code REV at checkout for 20% off your order. Now let's return to Dustborn. Now, of course... This game has been labeled the wokest game ever, and that is a title it definitely earned because the entire game is trying to use words as weapons. And when you are confronted with microaggressions from your enemies, you can use your trigger function to get back at them. And if that doesn't work, you can use another function of the game, and that is canceling them. Yes, canceling your enemies. So it's not much of a surprise that this game was an absolute failure. It was released about a week and a half ago, all-time peak of 76, can barely keep a few dozen players in-game right now. And honestly, a lot of the little breath of new life here is largely from people playing this game. It's somewhat of a new trend where people are playing Dustborn, just the clown on it. Yeah, that is a humiliating existence where a portion of your small fan base and, and player base is people making fun of you and games journalists trying desperately to prop you up. But now we have a statement from Red Thread Games, the development team. They have said this, a message from Red Thread to our community. As many people clown on them for, uh, what community are you talking about? There's only a few dozen people playing the game right now. And as others have suggested, why don't you just send them a DM or something? Like, I feel like you could just do that instead of making a public statement. But anyways, let's read what they had to say. To our community. Since we first announced Dustborn, we've read your comments and listened to your feedback, hopes, and wishes for the game. Over the past four years, our team has poured their hearts into telling a story that's deeply meaningful to us. A story about the power of words, about building a world where everyone can feel safe, about love, friendships, and robots, of course. So this whole thing is really funny about the, the power of, of words as weapons and all those things. I'll remind you that this game was quite literally made out of TDS, Trump Derangement Syndrome. The 2016 election made these developers so angry that they literally made this game as a coping mechanism for that. But let's focus on some of the things they're saying, right? They worked on this game with their heart and soul for four years. Wow, so much dedication. Well, one of the most noteworthy reactions to this game since its release is claims that they were literally copying and pasting GTA Online assets into their game. There's pretty convincing evidence for that. And that claim that they were copying and pasting pre-existing uh, assets is even more frustrating when you realize they were given a massive grant from the government. They got 150,000 euros to produce this game because nobody with their right mind and, and uh, you know someone who's an individual investor would want to give any money to a project like this. So somehow they can still trick the government into giving taxpayer dollars to fund this game. On top of that, you see this whole language here about uh, love, friendships, and robots. I have a section right here, this clip that really has been going viral on Twitter. This really sums up the game. Okay, it sums up all those three things I just mentioned. And this is a scene where the supposedly likable main protagonist is approached by a helpful and innocent robot who's just trying to help. And this is her reaction and your forced reaction as a player. Oh, hello. Hey, what's the golem doing on the bus? Ma'am, I'll be happy to serve as your driver. I want to assure you that I'm fully capable of operating this vehicle. I don't mean that you have software, of course. You lack the paperwork, but I don't need any. I'm not going to be mean to it. I don't know if there's a way through, though. Don't touch me! Hey! 
What was that? Again, adding to the humiliation of this game, the only things you see on social media coming from this game are clips showing how bad this game is and people clowning on it. That is a really bad state of affairs for this game. But anyways, let's continue in the statement. It says, We expected Dustborn to spark conversation and debate and look forward to engaging with our players in a positive and constructive fashion. Unfortunately, that conversation has been drowned out by a tidal wave of hate and abuse. Uh, it's always a harassment campaign with people like this, isn't it? Uh, this game has been rightfully facing a lot of criticism because the game itself is really bad. In fact, it's so bad, it feels like it's a parody. Honestly, I, I do believe this with my heart of hearts. If this game was produced as a parody of cancel culture, I think it would have been really well received because it's that ridiculous. It's so over the top with cancel culture and the power of words and all those things. It seems like a parody. And if it was marketed that way, I think it would have been really well received and people would have thought it was a really funny game. But that's not how this game was made. It was made unironically with concepts like canceling and bullying people for different opinions as a sort of positive uh, way to combat people. It's totally insane. But let's continue on. It says, we welcome thoughtful feedback and respectful criticism. We embrace discussion and debate, but we have a zero tolerance policy for hate speech, harassment, and threats of any kind. Those who engage in such behavior will be removed from our community. So first of all, you see this, this first part here about uh, welcoming thoughtful feedback and respectful criticism. How are you supposed to do that? This thread is literally locked. You can't reply to this post. You can only quote it and make fun of it through that avenue, but you can't even leave a thoughtful reply because they locked your ability to do so. If this doesn't sum up the hypocrisy of these people trying to have mindful discussions, I don't know what else would. But on top of that, we're talking about the safe space and how harassment and all these negative things won't be tolerated. We saw many people bring up tweets from one of the game designers at Red Thread Games, who not only was trying to shame others for doing regular crowdfunding while boasting about the fact that they got government funding, they also said a lot of disparaging things about men, for example. Why would men feel like they are welcomed in this community when you have a person working on the game who's saying stuff like this? A person who also tries to reiterate over and over again that gamers don't know what they want and they know better than the gamers themselves. In fact, they go even further saying that they're going to place themes and various other aspects into games that they know will trigger parts of the fan base. They're literally putting things into games out of spite for gamers. This is the kind of stuff that's supposed to be representative of the community. Wouldn't this be one of the people you're trying to get out? No, of course not, because it's one of you. It's one of people who fulfill and share a similar agenda with you. So you allow these things to exist and have no comment about it whatsoever. On top of that, let's continue and finish up this statement. It says, to everyone else, thank you for coming on this journey with us. Your support means everything and your constructive feedback continues to push us to learn and evolve. Together, let's continue building a world where everyone can feel valued and empowered to share their stories. Well, as long as those values and stories have the same agenda as yours. And also thanking the community. Well, I'm glad. Uh, I'm sure the, the 12 people are very happy about this statement right now. But as you can see, people are dunking on this. It has almost twice as many quotes as likes. And that's also part of the function of locking the reply. So you almost make it worse for yourself because now people are going to quote instead of reply and the quotes get more signal boosting than a regular reply. It's just so backwards. Like they have no idea what they're doing. Now, this is a situation where I think we're looking at the swan song of this game. They're really, they're typing this like a eulogy, like they're packing it up. The game's only been out for about a week, but this is a game that is trying to glorify concepts like cancel culture. And we've seen how that's gone. Supporting that stuff blows up in your face. Let's see a different example where cancel culture backfired in real time. So we're going to talk about this game called Soul Ash 2. Now, this game has gotten a lot of attention recently. It is a self-described sandbox RPG roguelike. Now, this game and its developer, Artur, were getting a lot of feedback recently, some positive and some unhinged hate as well. Now, why is that happening well, about two weeks ago, there were some reviews and questions left on the Steam page for this game where one individual asked, Hey, Arthur, can you uh, 
basically explain if there'll ever be a possibility of same-sex relationships in Soul Ash 2. And the developer would reply saying the main purpose of the family system is to create a legacy through children and given our limited ways to interact with NPCs, I don't think there's a good way to represent relationships, so I don't plan to expand that right now. And they go on to say in this quote right here and also in other tweets that basically uh, trying to add in this option not only kind of goes against the intended purpose of what the game's supposed to be doing, but also it just complicates it. They would have to literally rework multiple systems in the game just to add this option. So it was an apolitical decision. It was not something made to exclude people or show hatred towards certain people. It was an apolitical decision that made sense for the direction of the game and also the time of the developers who really don't have the resources or time to go in and rework essentially all the systems in the game to accommodate this additional option. But of course, people saw this and they started a hate brigade on this developer. And you can see right here, uh, days in the days after the, uh, the comment was made, they got review bombed. And this is a pretty significant amount of negative reviews for a smaller developer. This actually can leave quite a sting and a bad impression of this game. And you can see some of these unhinged reviews. You can pause and read for yourself. I'm not trying to pad watch time right now. But you can see they're, they're calling them all kinds of terrible, hateful things for not including this option in the game. And now you can see that this has been uh, updated and people have responded to the situation. You can see the, the clown emoji here getting 62 upvotes here. But this person would add an update to their statement saying, I have reached out to Artur to try and reach an understanding. And this prompted him to go on an unhinged nationalist rant on Twitter. Okay, let's see what they're talking about here. So first of all, Arthur is saying stuff like this. Uh, they are so mad at me for adding legacy through children to my multi-generational sandbox game. And that's really what we're talking about here, okay? People calling him a bigot and all these terrible, awful things because of this. This is what it is. It, it's crazy. The reaches people will do. And this is the unhinged nationalist rant this person is referring to. Where this would get a lot of attention, a lot of positive attention, by the way where they would say, my grandparents survived the Nazis. My parents endured communism. I had to live through religious opposition or oppression since the age of 10. And now some spoiled brats think I'll bend the knee to their rainbow flag or they'll type some words. I already have a flag I'm proud of and that's the flag of their country. And here were some of the replies. Yes, there was some positive attention, but there was also some continued unhinged rants and replies from users like this saying, you do realize Nazis and communists hunted down and killed gay people, right? The persecution you and your family faced are real. I don't want to discount that. But don't use that pain to justify discriminating against people who face the exact same persecution. Again, we are talking about in-game options for a sandbox roguelike, okay? And this is the response comparing it to these historical events. I, I really have nothing else to say about that. But anyways, you can see the tides did turn. So tweets like that and other YouTubers and content creators would start spreading the word about what's happening with this game and its developer and the treatment they're facing. And people would signal boost this game in a positive manner. And you can see everything flipped on its head. The negative reviews have been completely washed out by a much larger volume of positive reviews bringing a lot of life into this game and the developer. And honestly, it's a really good thing to see where people are trying to weaponize anything they can to cancel someone. And then it backfires like this. And you can see some further tweets where they're celebrating the new positive reviews saying the emperor has no clothes. There's nothing to fear from the oppressive mob trying to force their ideology. Games are for fun, not activism. Don't compromise your design. Ban those who can't stand hearing no. We'll be there for you if they dare this again. And here's the latest tweet, their final thoughts here, but I want to skip down here saying, throughout this drama, the only thing I shared about my politics was my love for my country and respect for my heritage. Far left extremists don't know how to deal with an apolitical person with a backbone from a foreign culture they've tried to character assassinate. After all of this, I will help create apolitical spaces for gaming. Any far-wing personalities will have to come to the centrist position 
of live and let live so we can focus on enjoying games or they'll be removed to promote us with their bickering somewhere else. This is how you fight extremism. And a lot of people supported this tweet. You can see it has over almost 10,000 likes. A lot of people have backed up this game. And of course, you can find it on Steam if you want to support it. And yeah, a, a good ending to a cancel culture attempt on a small developer. And we see how that went versus a game like Dustborn trying to glorify the concept of cancel culture and how that backfired on them. So that's going to do it for this video. As always, I appreciate you guys listening and you can leave any thoughts you have about today's topics in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you next time.